Hi guys, it's Cliff here again from Down Under. So here we are carrying on with our video series on chucks, collets, back plates and related work. Cheers. So you may know that a D14 chuck stud is held in with a thread. Um, in this case it's a 10 millimeter, uh, 1 millimeter pitch thread and it's screwed into the back plate and it's uh, located in a rotary position so it's free to float a little bit but it's 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 held in the uh, approximate position with this cap screw operating in a collet in, in, in a scallop sorry um, and, and they do that so that the studs and the back plates are all interchangeable it's a sort of a modular system and and I could make it like that, but there's quite a bit of extra work in that. It's uh, if you're making your own um, bespoke uh, back plates for your own lathe and your own chuck, you don't need to go to that much trouble. Um, you can just have them uh, mounted with a little bit of clearance here, and uh, you can put a spot of uh, thread lock on the thread, lock it up in the actual uh, lathe that you're going to operate it in, and then that will hold them in the final resting place. Um, so all I'm doing here is screwing these studs in, that's the stud there, screwing them into the back plate, tightening them up very tight in an aluminium jaw chuck so that they're really uh, firmly connected to the back plate and then I'm going to machine the scallop in there and I'll just show you some footage of that in a second. I'm sure there are lots of different ways that you could machine the cam lock scallop out of the studs. Um, this is just one way. You could do it on a CNC mill with a little bit of code, um, but I'm just quickly doing it on a manual mill here, putting it down two of the studs on a parallel, uh, referencing it lengthways off a stop here, and uh, tightening the studs on really firmly in the vise and then just putting a safety back up of a toolmaker's clamp probably isn't needed but still. Um, the essential dimensions are that you have a three quarter cutter, touch it on that face, back off 6.2 millimeters um, and then index in once you touch, once you touch the stud go in, sorry start that again, back off uh, 4.2 millimeters, touch on the diameter and uh, zero your um, setup on that and then cut in 6.2 millimeters deep and then slot it one millimeter out and then come out at 45 degrees. Um, here's a quick sketch of it here in case you want to do that. So you touch up on the face, back off 4.2 millimeters and uh, it actually needs to be at finished spec of 5 millimeters. but the reason why I'm backing off 4.2 millimeters is I'm allowing for a rotary back out of the stud to give it the ability to float and to take into account that there's a 20 degree, approximately 20 degree angle in that cutout scallop um, that uh, this is the way the D14 is designed and uh, machining it like this doesn't give you that 20 degree angle and so what I'm doing is uh, cutting it in closer to the face so that I can rotate the stud, unscrew it almost one turn to give it a floating distance and to align the scallop with the D14 cam lock. A uh, bit complicated but I'm sure if you're doing it you'll need to think it through for a minute and see what's involved. I won't rabbit on about it too long. That's the essential dimensions there. So the three quarter inch cutter is uh, 4.2 millimeters back off the face and uh, I'll just take you through this for a second. So I'm going to use the quill so that I'm not highly stressing the cutting action. I'll zero it up on there. I give it one millimeter cuts. One millimeter. Two millimeter. <laughs> 
5.2. So we're now 5.2 away from that face. A one millimeter slot. And we're going to do a 45 degree angle now. So I'll just change to uh, another tool number. Zero, enter, zero, enter. Back off one millimeter. And back off one millimeter. That's 45 degrees. A big radius scallop. Back off another millimeter, another millimeter. 45 degrees scallops. And one more. So that gives you the uh, ramp angle for the cam lock. Just to make that a bit more clear, so there's the cutout there. So you can see it's slightly slotted and it's got a 45 degree uh, lead out for the cam action face. If I put a 3 quarter inch uh, dowel there, uh, it's 4.2 millimeters back off that face in that direction. Uh, from memory was it 6.2 deep and then a millimeter slot in that direction and then coming out in a series of steps to generate that 45 degree angle down there. Well that worked out really well. That's actually a really quick way to cut the D14 camlock scallop. Um, so you machine it in a position that's convenient for machining, but you machine it in closer to the lock face. And that's allowing it now to lock up in the, uh, the best position between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock, the little mark should be. And that's, that's working out really well. Yeah, that's good. So, so you machine it in a position that's convenient to hold and repeat accurately and quickly cut, um, but you're machining it 0.8 of a millimeter closer to that face uh, of a one millimeter pitch thread, and then you're backing it out uh, 0.8 of a turn to get it to the correct place. Not a whole turn because I'm allowing for the 20 degree discrepancy in the camlock system that they use. It's on a 20 degree um, offset from a radial line. And as a double check you can see the only point it's contacting is on that 45 degree face there. Which is where it's meant to be bearing and not interfering everywhere else's clearance. It's just contacting on that 45 degree face. So that's perfect. That's a really good way to do it. If I need to make any more, I'll watch this video. And finally, to set the studs in place so they don't lose their adjustment um, and yet still have some compliance, um, I've put some uh, neutral cure silicon sealant on the thread and then set it in the lathe and locked it up in position so it's in the correct alignment and then tomorrow when I take it out the silicon will have set off and the uh, studs won't turn in there um, but they'll still be a little bit compliant and that saves the bother of having to have that universal modular system with little cap screws and setting them all up individually. Well, while the silicon on the threads has worked and it is holding it in position it seems a little bit too flexible and it may shear off at some stage in the future so when I did the second one I used some master gasket which is a sort of stiffer material and um, I think that's going to be better or you could use uh, Loctite screw lock triple two or 290 which is the softer of the screw locks I think it'd be a better option as I mentioned earlier I'm a great fan of having three jaw chucks able to be centralized by having them floating on their back plate and um, I've got other videos on this my early videos on rapid turn and fourth axis but if you drill the uh, threaded hole in the chuck right through and put a cap screw in from the front it allows you to easily dial in the concentricity I'll just do that now so you can see how quick and easy it is 
we uh, tighten it up with the marked scroll key. This one here is, I've got a zero on it, so I'm always using the same one. Excuse me, I'm working around the camera. And we just nip those three screws up very lightly, rotate it with a dial indicator on the top, find the highest point, tap down, and there you go, we're already within a hundredth of a millimeter. Find the highest point, and there we are. Very close now, it's probably better than a collet with just two taps of adjustment. Now we tighten up those screws, and uh, I've never had it shift or come off, even on a big powerful lathe taking heavy cuts. Although uh, everybody will have to assess their own situation and decide whether they think it's safe or not. I can't guarantee that. I use the system of a floating chuck, this big chuck on the big powerful lathe, a 10 inch chuck or 250 millimeters. I've been using this for years um, and I've got clearance on the location spigot. Um, and you've got to remember that you're clamping onto a big surface area, a big diameter relative to the forces. And, and it's a very strong way to hold surfaces together. It's to basically surface clamping over a big area. I mean, that's the same system that a vise is held on the table. It's surface clamped down on the table. Usually it's not keyed at all, but just two bolts. So a big flat area does grip really well. Um, all the same, um, do, do think about safety um, you know I'd, I'd hate there to ever be an accident um, if, you're, if you're at all concerned put a, a location spigot in the back and just give it enough a clearance for adjustment so if there ever was um, an accident it could only shift a small amount and still be contained within the spigot and if you're using slant pro I wouldn't run a chuck in the high speed range um, just stay in the low speed range limited to two and a half thousand rpm and uh, just just think through the implications of what you're doing just because I've never had a problem doesn't mean that I haven't come close to it without realizing at some stage in the past and then the soft jaws another fascinating subject but I think we've covered enough for this video I think I'll save soft jaws for another video well, that's probably enough for now, isn't it? Catch you next time.